Oh, okay, so it's recording now. Live. Oh, no. 
be with you all. And also with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May his grace and peace be with you. May you fill our hearts with joy. Almighty God, we do all our hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. For God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy. reading from the book of Acts. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, why do you go to, to the uncircumcised men? and eat with them. The people began to explain to them, step by step, said Peter, began to explain to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa, praying, and in the trance I, was a vision. I saw a vision. There was something like a large select cheat coming down from heaven being lowered by the four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles and birds of the air. I also heard the voice say to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord. For nothing profane or unclean has ever crossed my mouth. 
Rejecte. But it seemed the second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean, you may not call profane. This happened three times, then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me when we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angels standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it, as it, as it had in the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was, who am I that I could not in the God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 148 is found on page 907. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise, Praise him, Christ. Praise him, all you angels of his. Praise, Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise, Praise him, all the shining stars. Praise him, heaven of heavens. And you waters of the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he can. He made them stand fast forever and ever. He gave them all to the Lord. Praise the Lord from the earth. Fire and hail, snow and fog. Mountains and all hills. Wild beasts and all cattle. Kings of the earth and all peoples, young men and maidens, let them praise the name of the Lord. For his name only is exalted, his splendor is over earth and heaven. He has raised up strength for his people and praise for all his loyal servants. The children of Israel, a people of the Lord, hear him. Hallelujah. Let us pray together. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator of heaven and earth. You open our eyes to see the wonders around us, and our hearts and mouths to praise you. Now give us strength for loving service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> A reading from Revelations. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven, from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, 
See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first thing had passed away, and the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for those words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The word of the Lord. According to John, glory, glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new command, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another and walk in the way of his commandments, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We use that word grace a lot, but I think sometimes we don't really know the fullness of its meaning and its importance in our lives. I think sometimes we think of grace just as something that we say in church or you know we say before meals, we say grace before meals. <laughs> uh, on Sundays we have most of our kids come to Sunday dinner and uh, so we have you know, between 8 and 16 people there for dinner on Sundays often, uh, and, uh, and we sing grace together. 
Oh, the Lord's been good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun and the rain and the apple seed. The Lord's been good to me, Johnny Appleseed. Amen. That's what we say when we clap. And it, it's a silly moment, but it's, it's also uh, very much an expression of our gratitude for one another and our gratitude for the food which we're going to enjoy. So grace is a giving, uh, is, is an expression of thanks, but more, grace is God's gift to us. The, the uh, kind of dictionary definition of grace is God's grace is his love for us his free gift of love for us that we can neither earn or deserve. God knows us to the very root of our hearts. And he knows stuff about us which other people don't know. He knows all of our sins. He knows all of our weakness. He knows when our faith fails, when we turn away from Him. He knows all these things. And yet He freely gives us His love. We hear about this expression of grace in, uh, in the reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles and in the book of the Revelation to St. John today. The story from the, from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, this account of, uh, of, of Peter's broader vision of God's purpose in the world, uh, it is important because Luke repeats it three times in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. He describes Peter's actual vision Peter is uh, sleeping on top of a roof in Joppa, and uh, he has this vision or dream of a big sheet being lowered down from heaven, and all of these uh, creatures of the world that are considered by Jewish dietary law as unclean, and a voice comes from heaven and tells Peter, get up, eat. And Peter says, no, I'm not a good Jew. I don't eat that stuff. It is unclean. And the vision goes on to, with God saying to Peter, do not call unclean or profane what anything that I have made. And so Peter understands, has a broader understanding of what it is he can eat, and, and of the sacredness of all life, that there is nothing in the world that is profane that God has made. The profane things of the world we see on the TV news, the shooting in Buffalo, the war in Ukraine, uh, the, the, all the refugee problems, both in Europe and, and uh, in America's southern border. All of these problems, that's profane. That's profanity in God's kingdom. God was encouraging Peter to extend his understanding of God's grace to those around him. The account of this vision is repeated again when Peter receives three visitors who take him to Caesarea to, to, uh, to minister to a man. And Peter repeats the vision to them because they had received the vision calling them to go to Peter in Joppa and bring him back to Caesarea to minister in God's name, in Jesus' name. And Peter begins to understand 
that these Gentiles, to whom he's been called to minister, are part of God's sacred kingdom. And so through grace, his understanding is, alar is, is, is enlarged. His heart is enlarged. His love for God's creation is enlarged. Grace always makes us larger and better Christians and deeper believers. The very earliest leaders of the Christian church were in Jerusalem and still were abiding by Jewish dietary laws. And they were calling Peter to account for what he had done because they disagreed strongly with him sitting down and eating with Gentiles. And so we hear the account from the Acts of the Apostles this morning of Peter's accounting to the, to the elders of the church in Jerusalem. And they begin to understand that God's grace is bigger and deeper and wider and higher than anything we can imagine. It goes way beyond our own spirituality. God's grace calls to us to love one another, to see brothers and sisters amongst strangers, to understand that even people that make us cringe. We live in Brantford and, and at many of the intersections, there are young men and women, and some older ones too, uh, who hold up signs begging for change. Um, some of them, some of them sure look like they've been on drugs, but we don't know. They sure look like they're homeless, but we don't know. I don't always have money to get to them, and it's not always convenient to hold up traffic while I stop and have a conversation with them. But when I have a chance, I greet them and, and talk to them and acknowledge their humanity. That's grace, calling me to extend myself to these people that make me uncomfortable, especially since our son David died. Many of them would have known him. There are people, I suspect, in all of our lives people who make us cringe, people whom we would not accept, people that we might be surprised to see in church one day. God's grace not only encourages us to see them as brothers and sisters, to see them as part of God's sacred kingdom, but also grace gives us the ability to reach out to them, the ability to embrace them, the ability to welcome them and offer them hospitality. It is the work of the Holy Spirit to do that, to encourage us, to strengthen us, to help us to see these things. And that too is, is evident in the reading. Uh, from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. <coughs> that Peter's vision and his interaction with the Gentiles and, and the, the, the change of heart by the elders in Jerusalem, all part of God's spirit. And that's very much what the whole book of the Acts of the Apostles is about. It's the work of the spirit in the early church and in the lives of those who led the church. Where I say, see grace writ in big block letters is in the book of the Revelation to St. John in chapter 21. Revelation can be a scary book. It is not intended 
to be taken literally. Much of it is poetic and figurative, and, and we, we need to, to understand that when we're reading the book. Chapter 21 uh, is, is just a, a wonderful description of what happens at the end of time. And it's really important to see, first of all, that the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God descends from heaven to earth. We don't go somewhere else at the end of time. Heaven's not somewhere else, you know, up in the skies or, or on Mars or wherever. The kingdom of heaven will be right here the kingdom of heaven will be here in its fullness. All creation will be redeemed. There will be no more, no more war, no more crime, no more disease, no more injustice, no more tears, no more pain. Because God's kingdom will have arrived in its fullness. And we will all be redeemed. That is God's grace, written in big block letters. And that God makes all things new. We are constantly being made new. Each morning when we rise, we are made new. Every time we turn our hearts to God, we are made new. Every time we confess our sins and receive absolution, we're made new. Every time we receive communion, the Eucharist, we are made new. We are all works in progress. And God has a plan for us, and that is redemption, grace, peace. So as we move through this season of Easter, we come to understand some of the significance of Jesus' death and resurrection. And we come to understand that this grace which we experience in this world and which we anticipate will come is a result of Jesus' death and resurrection at Easter. May we live our lives in the light of this grace. May we love one another in a way that other people will notice and see, oh, those are Christians. See how they love one another. See how they welcome people that make them cringe. See how they offer hospitality. These are hallmarks of Christian community. May it be the hallmark of this Christian. We continue as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people.
please join us for the prayers of the people found on page 122. We pray for our world vision children, Dennis, Jose, and Baltimore. We pray for the parish janitor, George, Margaret, and Gregory Saunders. We pray for the sick and all those in special need. We pray for George, Lisa, Rita, Marilyn, Vance, Jerry, Lila, Pat, and all those who know in our hearts alone. In our, our Diocese of Prayer, we pray for the people and clergy of St. Peter's Church, Grace Church. We pray for Reverend Larry and Susan and family. Todd, our Bishop of Huron, and Linda, our primate of Canada, and our Met Metropolitan, Mariness, Bishop of Amazonia, and Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury. The flowers on the altar are placed in the glory of God by Lance and Jacqueline Bowie in honoring of their 52nd wedding anniversary. And congratulations. In, in the response of prayers of the people of hear us more than glory. In joy and in hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory. That our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life giving resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That the isolated prosecuted church may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel that is prayed to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, Lord. That he may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christ's Christian love that is prayed to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, Lord. That he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter that is prayed to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, Lord. That by his power, wars and famine may cease through all the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying. That they may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord. That he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people. That we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Yes. We continue on page 191. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confidence in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by the way we have done, and by the way we have left. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have and mercy on us and forgive us, that we may go back in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet one another.
we continue our worship and our experience of God's grace as we sing together in the offertory hymn number 500. Sister, let me be your servant. Gracious God, you show us your way and give us your divine light. May everything we do be directed by the knowledge of your truth. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Lord. Amen. We continue on page 193 of the Eucharistic Prayer number 1. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick, and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ. <laughs>
have heard your truth and shared in your life. May we always walk in your way. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Glory to God, who is power and working in us, and who infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Keep all of our understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Let us sing our processional hymn, number 388, first and last verse. Oh, mm -hmm. 